Welcome back, folks. Greg Silverman for CIOs and Bowties. Uh, another session of Come Learn With Me, all the articles that <clears throat> you'll like from the prior week and what's got the most shares, likes, etc. So we're a curated media company. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is one that, that hit the top of the hit parade last week. It's very interesting. It's a little lengthy, but it's very interesting. And in honor of the tech nature of the article, I have the uh, startup capital of the world, well, not the kind of startup country of the world behind me, and that's uh, uh, Israel and uh, the skyline of Tel Aviv, maybe from the Azrael Center, I'm not quite sure. So, Erev uh, Tov to all Israeli viewers. Okay, Global Ventures is from Crunchbase. Crunchbase is a very well known uh, technology publication. Global venture funding hits all time high in first half of 2021 with 288 billion invested. Okay. Whew. That's good stuff. All right. Space, Bitcoin. <laughs> Global venture capital funding in the first half of 2021 shattered records as more than 288 billion was invested worldwide. Crunchbase numbers show that's up by just another 110 billion compared to the previous half year record. Wow. Uh, in the second half of 2020. So that is double. Is that right? My math is correct. This is from July. Okay, so hmm. that's still all right. New funding records. A great number of those venture back companies have gone public, valued about 10 billion so far. A greater number just halfway in than all of 2020. Wow. I mean, it's just okay. Let's, let's give it time. Let's not make any judgments. And already this year, another 250 companies have joined the Crunchbase Unicorn Board. Okay, and you need to be a pro user of Crunchbase to see the Unicorn Board. I wonder how long that is compared to 161 new unicorns for the whole of 2020. The backdrop for all this activity is the venture ecosystem. In the venture ecosystem, is a strong first quarter earnings for leading technology stocks as countries slowly emerge from the pandemic. On July 2nd, both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ Composite Index hit all-time highs. In the past 12 months, there have been a cavalade of exits that in almost any year prior to the last few would have been among the largest exits in venture history by absolute dollars, even if adjusted for inflation. It's in bed and savage of clockwork technology ventures, a Santa Monica-based fintech venture investor that also manages separate public market funds. Yeah, fintech. <clears throat> This increase in large exits in the past five years signifies a real change in the private markets, according to Savage. Larger institutional allocators are recognizing that, which leads to more capital flow into funds that invest in private companies and directly into private companies, allowing companies to stay private and create tremendous amounts of value. Crunchbase numbers show that global venture funding in the first half of 2021 surged 61% compared to the prior peak of 179 billion in the second half of 2020. That's up 95% compared with the first half of 2010, 2020, when ventures invested, invested deployed 148 billion globally. Growth and PE investors as a cohort have invested more dollars in rounds they led this year so far combined to the whole of 2020. All right, we get it. It's big. The same can be said for venture investors as well by the half year mark. All told, 17 companies have raised rounds above a billion dollars through the first half of this year, including Norvold, Waymo, Sloan's. I can't say I recognize maybe one of those. Notably, Istanbul-based delivery company Getter raised its Series B, C, D, all in a six-month period, totaling 983 million across these three subsequent funding rounds. They valued the company from 850 million for its Series B to 7.5 billion in the Series D. Wowzers. Wowzers. And this is a delivery company in Turkey. Record funding was invested in at every stage in the first half of this year, late stage funding peaked the most, <clears throat> more than doubling year over year per crunch based numbers. Early stage funding grew more than 60% over the prior two half year timeframes, and seed funding gained 40% year over year. Okay. In the stratosphere, increased investing pace, growth equity investors, Tiger Global Management, and Insight Partners racked up the most portfolio companies for the first half of the year, according to crunch based data. Tiger Global, who's breakneck investing. I used to uh, know their hedge fund quite well. Well, one of their hedge funds, I got mean, who's breakneck investing pace this year, we've written about previously. It had 110 new portfolio companies. It had led 87 rounds in new and existing portfolio companies 
averaging more than 14 rounds led per month. The firm has added 58 unicorn companies to its portfolio already this year. Wow, that's blistering pace. Inside Partners added 71 new portfolio companies in the same time frame, but led more rounds, totaling 82 for new and existing portfolio companies. Venture firm and Friesen Horowitz, Excel, and Growth Equity Investor General Catalyst reached round out the top five active investors year to date. Co2. Co2 is a technology hedge fund I used to invest in. Sequoia, obviously, it's a big name. Time ago, we already mentioned. Hmm. A long list of growth equity investors also make up the roster of firms leading or co-leading deals with the largest amount committed to private companies. So interest growth equity investors typically are investing, you know, later in the stage, right? Late, they'll pick it up maybe late stage. Tiger Global Top Set List, followed by SoftBank Vision Fund, Inside Partners, Co2, Silver Lake Fidelity, D1 Capital Partners, and T-Row Price by funding amounts led or co-led. Sequoia Capital, notably, notably the only venture firm listed in the top 10 is followed by GIC, Goldman Sachs, Fieldhouse Capital, General Catalyst, and DST Global. Across the 390 deals these funds led, only 26 deals had a co-lead amongst these 14 investors. Wow. That means that they are cashed up. They didn't need any co-investors. They could put all the money necessary. Yeah, so that's investors that led or co-led funding. Yeah, so as I'm saying, most of them are private equity and growth firms investing typically in earnings positive and certainly revenue positive companies, later stage, as venture capital would be earlier. Hmm. Interesting, you see, there's obviously not enough deal flow or interest, too much interesting deal flow at the late stage. Re record new unicorns. At the half year mark in 2021, 250 companies joined the crunch based unicorn board compared to 161 new unicorns. Look at that hour. So the board now counts 879 private companies collectively valued at close to 3 trillion that have also raised 564 billion. You know, I, for a guy who went through the late 90s bull market in, in uh, tech, I mean, this dwarfs it, I think by magnitude, and that was crazy times. Of these 250 companies, newly valued 1 billion, newly valued 1 billion and above, 161, more than half are headquartered in the US. China and Canada score the next highest count with 10 each. India and Germany have nine new unicorns each, and Israel, blah, blah, and the UK and France each have seven. Kolokavod, Israel. These 250 new unicorns have collectively raised 78 billion over time and have added 419 billion in post money valuation to the crunch based unicorn board. All right, how are we doing here? Let's keep going. Come on, we're learning. Learning sometimes is tough. Record funding by stage, late stage funding growth. Late stage funding has only gotten hotter as the year has progressed. More than 100 billion was invested globally in the second quarter, up from 91.5 billion in the first quarter. The most recent quarter is also up more than 40 billion compared to quarterly funding totals for each quarter in 2020 per crunch base figures. This year's surge also represents large fundings to a great number of companies at the later stages, with more than 1,600 having raised late stage funding this year so far. Early stage. Early stage funding peaked at 43.4 billion to over 1,900 startups globally in the second quarter of 2021, up 66% year over year. So how much does that mean per startup? It's uh, sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Bring out the old calculator, the old Casio. So research funding peaked at 43.4 billion to over 1900, uh, 43.4 billion about 1,900 is equals, and it's times that by 1 billion. Oh, one more. So that's the average seed funding was 228,000, or early stage funding. So each ticket was roughly 228,000. Okay, that's about right. Let's call it 250 round. Two. Interesting. Seed funding. Well, that's, this is seed funding, actually. 
So that's early stage. Okay, let's see this. Over 6 billion was invested in more than 3,500 seed stage startups. Okay, we'll have to do the same calculation again. So we've got 6 billion. That's what 6 billion looks like, divided by 3,500. One, well, oh, goodness, is that wrong? Nah, I must have that wrong. Hold on, guys, stick with me. Six billion, six. At six million, oh, sorry. At 60 million, 600 million, six million. I got my notes confused. No, I didn't. 1.7 billion per, something wrong with that. In the first half, it's worth noting that seed funding counts typically increase over time as these deals are often added to Crunchbase data set after the close of the investment. Okay, we'll have to revisit that. Public and day, public debuts and exits. Eight companies made public debuts above 10 billion this past quarter, bringing the total number to 16 so far in 2021. That's the highest count in the last decade. In 2020, 13 venture-backed companies debuted at a valuation of about 10 billion. We count a total of 16 public market debuts of about 10 billion in the prior nine years. San Francisco-based Coinbase, okay, a nine-year-old nine is the largest public debut by a direct listing this past quarter, valued at 86 billion at the end of its closing day. Coinbase has raised more than 500 million as a private company. As of July 1, the company is valued at 50.4 billion. Staggering. Beijing-based ride, ride hailing service DD, also nine years old, is the second most highly valued IPO this past quarter at 73 billion. And of course, there was issues with that. Um, as we know, the company has raised more than 20 billion in funding as a private company. So you also favor and just Google DD to see what happened to that IPO. Um, as the uh, okay, so there's DD, Coinbase, any other names that we know? App Lovin, yes, I've heard of that. App Lovin, a play maybe on Mac Lovin. Ha <laughs> uh, Okay, nice. All on the West Coast, by the looks of things, huh? New York. Sweden. Hmm. More growth firms invested directly. As we look back at 2021, can this unprecedented pace of deal making and dollar commitments from the leading firms continue in the latter half of 2021? More than 50 million growth equity investors have invested more than 1 billion dollars in deals they have led or co-led so far in 2021, Crunchbase figures show. These include private equity firms, hedge funds, uh, investment banks, sovereign wealth funds, and pension funds investing directly in private companies. We found similar trends in 2020, and 47 growth equity investors led more than 1 billion in rounds. The commitment from growth investors to invest directly in private companies is not new, but has grown in the last five years, peaking in the first half of 2021. Multi-stage venture investors have also have led or co-led rounds above a billion or up to nine so far in 2021 and 15 in total in 2020. There are now close to 900 unicorn companies across the globe, some of which will likely see to go public soon. Investors are betting that the next Spotify, Shopify, Netflix, PayPal, Alibaba, Tesla, Facebook, Google, or Amazon has yet to go public. Talk about uh, link, link, link. What's it called? Link baiting. Link, yeah. As we come out of the pandemic, it just became clearer and clearer how important this next generation of technology-powered, high-growth businesses are going to be. So Cloud Clock Tower Savage, who expects this shift in asset to continue. We will all look back in 15 or 20 years and venture capital as an asset class and the associated sort of derivative asset class, as associated sort of derivative asset class, class from traditional PC will be much, much bigger. Wow. Uh, it's certainly the fat and calf. I just want to go back to this, actually. I just want to just make sure that I get, get you the right facts, Governor. All right, so early stage funding peaked at 43.4 billion to over 1,900 startups. Okay, so let's do that. So 43. That's 43 million. 430 million, 4.3 billion, 43 billion. I believe it looks like that. Divided by 1,900 gives you, okay, 
22 million per startup. That's obviously skewed. Well, this is early stage, okay. But the average ticket at 22 and a half million, that's, that must be skewed. That's pretty high. Staggeringly high. Maybe that's the point the article's making. Now let's go to this one. Seed capital. I mean, seed capital start off, you know, for, you know, I've seen seed capital be 50,000, 100, 150,000. So let's see, over 6 billion, that's 6, that's 6 million, 60 million, 600 million, 6 billion. So our 3,500 seed stage startups. That's 1.7 million per seed stage startup that I guess made it into their database. That's a lot. That's a big number. Again, must be skewed, highly skewed. So maybe an interesting analysis is to see how it's skewed because, you know, follow the money. Uh, that might be a strategy. Anyway, guys, very interesting. Um, oh, we didn't read the methodology or the glossary of funding terms. So maybe you want to cover that off yourself and be extra diligent students. Very good. Well done. So thanks for joining me. It was a long article. I hope you made it through. Um, yeah, not what to make of this tech. I, you know, we, I need to digest some of my information and, and give you guys an analysis at some point. But um, anyway, I'll refrain from doing that right now. Um, join me soon for another Come Learn With Me. And um, yeah, Greg Silverman from the Tel Aviv Skyline. Uh, Erev Tov. Um, good night.